Hey folks, today I'm going to show you how to make what I call a garlic keeper or a garlic roaster. This is what it looks like finished. So it's a mini casserole dish basically, but I've got air vents in the top, so it's a great um, utilitarian, all purpose, uh, I've got instructions inside, um, piece for the countertop to set your garlic in after you purchase it from the store because garlic doesn't like to be refrigerated. Um, and the air vents allow for air circulation so that it doesn't um, grow or sprout. And this is also functional for baking in. So you can simply chop the chop tops off of your um, whole garlic and drizzle with some olive oil, stick it in the oven in a roasting temperature, and out you get beautiful roasted garlic that you can kind of squeeze out of the shell. So it's a really functional dual purpose piece for the kitchen, but it's also a fun little mini type casserole dish. So if you've already watched my larger casserole and you're just not there yet in terms of um, your skill level to work with lots of clay, these pieces are really accessible and we'll also show you the same technique for a gallery lid and you can see what that gallery looks like finished. The lid just sits really neatly in there so it doesn't wiggle back and forth. So let's get started. I've already weighed out two pieces of clay, one for the base of my pot at a pound and a half and one at one pound for the lid of my pot. So I'm going to start with the base. You are going to need, I like to use bats. You can certainly do this without bats if you're just um, removing your pieces and setting them on wear boards. That's an option too. But if you have bats, it's just easier not to have to take pots that you've measured and have galleries and exact lid fits off of the bats that they're on because the transport may end up warping them later. So, get started with this one and a half pound piece little bit of water and get this piece centered. You're also going to want to have some calipers nearby. Those are a good measuring device. If you don't have fancy calipers, a ruler works just fine. So I like to center these down so that they're fairly um, shallow cylinders or short fat cylinders to begin working on the base of my piece. So just for reference, this is about four and a half by about just under an inch tall. And because it's so shallow, I find it difficult to dig with my fingers without getting a bunch of sort of digging marks and finger marks and releasing a bunch of clay and losing it. So I prefer to dig with these shallow forms with my sponge. So I'm gonna dig down about half the distance here or half the depth and then begin to open. The sponge is a great tool for making shallow plates or dishes like this because you get just a more even consistency than you do with your fingertips. And then you can do the same thing with the sponge that you would normally do is just go back and allow for a little bit of compression of that base. It's windy today and you can hear my vent is uh, making some creaky noises like an old house. Right, so once I've got the base compressed, I'm landing at about five and a half, five and three quarters wide so far. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring my walls up. Now with any pot with a lid um, that you're gonna wanna put a gallery in, you wanna be mindful not to let the top of your lip of your wall become too thin and fragile. So I wanna be careful that I keep some extra clay in order to make my gallery really functional. So I bring that clay up, but instead of typically following through and coming up and off the rim of the piece, I'm just kind of holding, so I'm allowing some extra clay to collect at the rim. We'll bring up again, squeezing up from the base, outer, outside edge of that piece, coming up, maintaining a little bit more of a cylinder shape to start. Coming back and just applying a little bit of pressure. So I like to use this technique to flatten out the rim of any pot. So anything that I stamp into or make a gallery out of, I use a two finger hold with my left hand. If you're a right-handed potter, you can reverse these instructions if you're a left-handed potter. Index finger and thumb, just a very gentle hold here. It's not a pinch or a squeeze, it's just a support. And then the index finger from my right hand just comes up with a little bit of water and applies a, a subtle, gentle amount of pressure to flatten that rim. 
The purpose of the pinching hands is to hold the rim up so that the pressure from the right hand doesn't just squish your pot down, right? So it looks like a lot of complicated finger holding, but it's really, really simple technique. And I use this because I don't use chamois. A lot of people who use a little strip of chamois cloth um, do the same do the same thing. And this helps compress the rim of the pot as well. So now I'm gonna go back and make sure I have plenty of water and I'm gonna come in and begin my gallery. So if you watched my casserole video, then this is the same premise and anytime I do a gallery, it's the same handhold. So all the fingers from my left hand are just kind of gently gathering and holding and supporting, barely touching the inside of the pot, but just as support. Same thing with the three middle ring finger and pinky fingers on my right hand. My index finger is doing all the work here in terms of dividing the wall in half and creating the gallery. So they come together like little gathered, um, like a group gathering. And then the index finger at the edge of my uh, fingernail actually, and the edge of my fingertip is what's applying the pressure to divide that wall in half. I'll give you a close up view in one second. Just do a little bit of cleanup. You don't want to apply too much pressure with the sponge because you don't want to um, undo what you just did. I'm just gonna go back and create a little bit more depth. I like a gallery that has a little bit of depth because otherwise you risk whatever uh, lid you're making is gonna sit just really shallow on top of the pot and it doesn't get a good seal, right? So just to show you, this is the benefit of using bats. You can see that gallery. Just took the wall with the edge of my index finger and divided it. As long as you have enough clay up there and the strength of your walls can hold up your pot, then you'll be fine. All right, so now I'm gonna go back and add a little bit of shape, being very mindful only to shape the body of the pot. I'm staying away from that lip and the gallery that I just made. Just wanna bring this guy up and out a little bit more. There we go. I like to make sure that these are um, gonna be big enough to fit at least three bulbs of garlic in. Three to four, depending on the size. They look exaggerated in size right now because the clay will shrink, as we know, as it dries. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this free from the wheel and take some measurements. We started out with a pound and a half of clay and we've landed at about six and a half at the outermost diameter and about two and a half inches tall. So now with my calipers, I'm going to go ahead and measure the size for my gallery to make that lid. I want to get as exact a measurement as I can. And then I'll gently set these down, tighten that wing nut, make sure I'm still where I need to be. You can do the same thing with the ruler. As I said, if you don't have calipers, you just get the interior dimension of where that gallery starts and finishes. And if I were to do it with a ruler, I'd be right at about six and an eighth inch. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this free. Just get the extra slip off my bat, which makes cleaning the bat easier later, and set this guy aside. New bat for the lid. Again, the lid is one pound. And I'm gonna start off centering, and I'm going to make a, a cylinder here that's a little taller than I started with for the base. Now the lid is essentially just a shallow bowl, right? We're throwing a bowl, we're gonna turn it upside down, it's gonna become the dome lid. So I'm centered to just about three and a quarter inches in diameter and just about an inch tall here. I'm gonna dig down so I'm to about half my depth. I wanna leave this nice and thick because when I trim it, I wanna have plenty of play to be able to trim a nice dome. And if you put the bottom too thin, then you end up with a dome on the edges of your piece and then a flat top, which looks a little, funky still functional right so bringing my walls up and out at the same time that just means pulling at an angle rather than pulling straight up towards the ceiling like you normally would for a cylinder 
And these don't take a whole lot of effort. You're basically leaving a little bit of a pedestal base to be able to cut them, trim them free from. All right, so this is much more of a dome in height than I want it to sit on top of my pot. So here I come with the calipers and I need to come a little wider. Now I already know that this is gonna be a little bit too big. So I'm gonna cut free some of that clay. And I'm gonna come back with the sponge to remove some of the water from the inside and the outside. One more little pull just to make sure I've gathered what I want. And then I'm gonna come back with my red mud tools rib to take the excess slip off the outside, which helps strengthen things. And then coming on the inside and leaning this tool down so you can start to see that dome get a little bit more shallow or the bowl shape take on more of a shallow. Good. And I need to go a little bit farther, which is what I want. I don't want a really tall, clunky looking dome. I want a nice subtle dome that re reflects the subtlety of the base. And just a smidge more. It's really important to just do little bits and keep going back and looking at the calipers. You always wanna throw lids and pots at the same time so that they shrink at the same rate. Give that a quick cleanup. I'm right where I want to be in terms of measurement. Come back with my wire tool. And now I've got my lid. And you can see how that just sits on a shallow base. I'm not concerned with having to cut any of this away because it's all going to get trimmed away later. And here is the pot it's going to go on top of as a lid. So I hope this was helpful for you guys in terms of a mini casserole. Again, this is the intent that it's going to look like a little garlic keeper and I sculpt a piece of garlic as my knob but you can certainly do any kind of knob. Hey folks thanks for watching my tutorials as the vegan potter and I'm here in my shop which is located in southeastern Connecticut in Stonington. Um, if you're not local to this area and you can't stop by the shop then I hope you'll visit my website at theveganpotter.com where you can find lots more work lots more ideas and there's a whole recipe page where you can check out all my vegan food creations. Take care and thanks for watching. Leave me a comment below. If you need some help with something, I'll do my best to support your journey in clay. Take care.